Drive up your engine! Well, you looking for a custom car? How about a 2020 vet? All Captain America out. You couldn't pay a better car to turn into a Captain America car. The motors are still made down the street where I grew up, outside of Buffalo, Tonawanda. They've been making V8 motors there for a long time, and they still know what they're doing. Now, this isn't a pretend race car like the BMW Super I showed a few weeks ago. It goes zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds. This thing is a screamer. These guys really did a good job wrapping it. Have a pro do it so it looks nice like this. Don't attempt it yourself. I've seen some really bad results of that. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this looks like a custom paint job. You can't really tell the difference whatsoever. Now the whole idea behind this car is serious driving. That's why it's mid-engine. Never made a mid-engine one. They had prototypes ages ago, but this is the first real production mid-engine one. And it really has the perfect weight balance and interestingly enough as i showed in my previous video these things are adjustable you can have them low for race It'll lift it up when you're driving so you don't rip the bottom of it off all of my customers that have conventional ones that are low they're always ripping the front off all the plastics getting torn off these are set up for it and if you want to go through the hassle of putting on your gps it'll even remember where your driveway is and it'll pick it up in the air so you don't scrape it in the driveway if perhaps you had one too many and forget to lift it okay now this thing goes but does it stop brake calipers that size it's certainly going to stop now this has the street set up on it it's got plain rotors on it now a lot of guys will say oh man i want drilled slotted rotors on them those are for racing stop go stop go stop go stop go so they dissipate heat better and don't get red hot they wear out faster you end up getting feedback and sound that you're not going to like for street driving this is better you want to be a serious racer go ahead and get a set put them on when you race they put these back on because these are going to last a really long time smooth ride and they stop perfectly fine now they're not going to stop any slower than the other ones they actually can stop faster the first time because there's more surface area it's the repeated brake and stop brake and stop brake and stop and if you drive like that on the street hey you're going to get a ticket anyway <laughs> we get to the back usually there's little ones there these are bigger than most front ones same thing they're perfectly designed for stopping this thing evenly. And the tires, of course, are matched with the car. Don't think you're going to change these tires. And speaking of changing things, don't change the exhaust. Listen to this thing. Don't think, oh, I'm going to take this off and put in free or flowing ones. No, this is free flowing enough. Again, it was designed correctly. You don't want to start modifying things that do not need to be modified. Everything on here was designed for airflow. Don't start sticking stupid things on it that may change it. Feel free to wrap it all you want, paint it all you want, but don't mess with any of the aerodynamics. They knew what they were doing when they designed this thing. They're aerodynamic. Don't think you can change them to make them work better. And the speaker system and the stereo. Listen to it. But me, I'll turn it off because I like hearing the engine noise. A lot of guys are going to whine, oh, it's an automatic, it's a wussy car. No, it isn't. It's a computer controlled dual clutch transmission with actual clutches, only instead of using your foot, the computer does it all. And believe me, I've tried to beat the computers in various cars. The computer always beats me. Doesn't matter. It knows how to shift it faster than I can and what range to have it in. You can't beat the computer. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. And the resolution of this stuff's unbelievable. The resolution of the rear view mirror. Hey, this stuff is not trash. This is unbelievable quality. We're not talking some cheesy viewfinder. Floor away so you can see everything. So you're not gonna ruin those expensive rims when you're parking or if you wonder if somebody's coming up on you on the side, you can watch it. It's well set up too, look. You got all your controls on the right hand side. So you don't have to even flinch over much. You don't need to look in the front and try to figure it out. It's all, once you understand where the buttons are, you can just reach over and push them. But it's not made for Scotty, I'm left-handed. <laughs> I'd have to be over here on the passenger side with an English steering wheel over that. Now, if you drive conservatively on the highway, it's not bad. He came down here from Dallas, averaged about 80 miles an hour. Hopefully the police weren't watching. And he got 28 miles a gallon. Look, I drove that Lexus SUV and I got 20 and a half going 75 going to New Braunfels. So you'd be surprised. 
If you're not dogging it, it's got so many gears. 28 miles a gallon. That's with the AC on. It's hot out here. And look what happens when you step on it. It goes. It's a classic rear wheel drive car. And that's actually one of the reasons it can get 28 miles a gallon going 80 miles an hour. It's not all wheel drive. It doesn't have all that wasted energy. Sometimes all wheel drive is something you don't want in a car. Definitely not in this thing. Everything's adjustable. You're taking your girlfriend out. Do you think she wants to ride in a sports suspension? No, maybe some do. I've got friends that have girlfriends that drive Ducati motorcycles. Yeah, you never know. But most women, they want a smooth ride. You put it in a touring mode, it rides quite smooth for a car that's rear wheel drive with all this horsepower. Now, if you listen, you can hear road noise. We're on a rough asphalt road. This is a race car. This isn't something that is silent. <laughs> you expect to hear road noise. You want feedback. You don't want a neutral car, like a limousine, where you don't feel anything. You want to feel the road because you're going to be driving on it extremely hard. Now, for you convertible fans, they're not out yet, but they're going to make some. The interesting thing about these, though, is every single one is made as a convertible. And then all these hard tops, which is what they've made so far, are added onto it. So basically it started out as a convertible anyway. So if you're more into the show of the open air, you know, wait a few months, you can buy yourself a convertible. Hey, it's not round. Yeah, it's a racing steering wheel. When you're pulling in the driveway, you can see what you're doing, even though you can't. <laughs> the camera sees for you. I got a skinny driveway, and this is a wide car, but look, it's not hitting anything. If you want to know anything about Corvettes, check out Brink of Speed. That's all that he's into. And if you want to do one of these wraps, this was done by a pro. Wasn't that bad? It was 3,500 bucks. It really does look sharp. Now, you want to keep it in the shade. You want to take care of it. It doesn't last as long as paint, but really, when you look at them, I really think sometimes they look better than paint. And here's the guys who do the wrap. I have to admit, it really shuts the car off. These guys know what they're doing. I would not attempt it myself. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Playmaster 207 says, Scotty, what do you think about the new Dodge Charger 2020 widebody? They're fast, zippy vehicles. Yes. Dodge always did have problems with quality control, and they've had problems with those Hemi engines, not getting correct lubrication on the cams and them wearing out. But to me, it's fascinating that Fiat bought Chrysler. Because one thing Chrysler was known for was making good-looking cars that were zippy but didn't hold up over time. The Italians, what are they known for? They're known for vehicles that look sharp, fast, handle well, but fall apart as they age. So basically, you got two companies merged that do the same thing. Make good-looking things that run fast and drive good, but they fall apart as they age. So I would never buy one of those. Lease it. You know, lease it. Then you get it out of your system. If it breaks, that's their problem, not yours, because you're leasing the car. You buy one, you're going to lose an awful lot of money. If you drive it any serious amount of mileage, you know, those will never really be collector's items. They sell too many of them. They're mass-produced cars. They're not going to be like a 67 Mustang where it's a collector's item. No, they're not going to. So if you really have to get one, lease it. Have some fun, then get rid of it. Mark F. says, Scotty, my car pulls to the right. 2013 Chrysler 300C. I've had wheel alignment, rotated tires, change the calipers, change the right front bearing, replace the struts. What could it be? Find a better alignment shop. You guys are morons. Their job is to figure out the car is aligned, so it's tracking correctly. They have to check everything. The tires, the struts, the ball joints, the bearings. You said you had one bearing changed. Those guys are idiots. Alignment guys that I use, that I use for decades, I tell them exactly what's happening with the car. So they got feedback. Then they balance the tires, they align it, they check the tires. Then you know what they do? They take it for a 10 minute road test, because these guys are pros. If it's still pulling, they'll keep working until they figure it out. The guys you're dealing with, they're idiots. They don't know what they're doing. So I wouldn't trust any of the work that was done. Find a good front end guy, have him test it, and they'll tell you what's wrong. They pull because something is wrong with either the suspension system, the braking system, or it's not aligned correctly. And that's the job of the alignment mechanic. The person you're going to is an idiot. He's not a real alignment mechanic. And especially if you go to a lot of those chain stores where they sell tires and they say they do alignment and stuff, the mechanics there, they're not worth beans because they don't get paid that much money. They're just selling you crap. Find a real front end alignment shop, one that specializes in front end alignments. Go there. They'll be able to figure it out. And then if they tell you 
You didn't have this work done, show them all your paperwork. And if they say, they charged you for this, they didn't do it, take it back to them. Tell them you want your money back, you're going to sue them. There's a lot of fraud going on these days, so you got to check that. But find a good alignment shop first, because the guys you're dealing with, they're just plain idiots. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.